I believe that the uh, Lord's trying to get our attention, don't you all? Amen. With everything that's going on, with the words that we're getting. And uh, some of the brothers was talking after church this morning, and so it seems like if uh, uh, you go and you turn on another, uh, say, turn on TV and you hear preaching or you turn on the radio, it seems like all these messages are lining up. And I said, that's exactly right. I said, that's when you know you're right in line because it's the same spirit that's operating in one body, which is the body of Christ. That's the reason you can say that, well, I heard bits and pieces of that this morning or I heard that this evening, is because the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit that dwells within us is the one that's bringing the message. It's not, it's, I'm just the postman. I'm just being a postman. All I'm doing is delivering the mail. And this is what it's all about, is delivering what God has given us, what's responsible. And that leads right into what I'm going to talk about tonight. It is, is our service being a church. This morning it was a church on fire. Well, church on fire, this is exactly what we do. We minister to people. Amen. As it was said this morning, as Brother Eddie brought it out, uh, we're all ministers. It's just not the person behind the pulpit. Not everybody can preach. Not everybody can teach. Not everybody can be up here. But you know what? Every one of us can be out there where the mission field is. That's, that's where we work, is out here, outside these doors. And that's what we have to understand as the body of Christ, as a powerful body of Christ, that will accomplish what we've been tasked or given to do. That's what we will be held responsible for, is what will we be found faithful in what He's given us. Turn to the Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. The book of Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to read a few verses here. Colossians chapter 1. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Colossians 1, I'm going to read verse 23, probably down through 29. Colossians 1, 23. Is everybody there? Amen. 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 Verse 23 says, If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. And he's not just talking to Paul, he's talking to all of us here. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages, from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God who would make known what is the riches of the glory of, his, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Let's pray. Father in heaven, once again we come before you and we lift you up. We thank you, Lord, for your word and we thank you for what you've given us, Lord. We thank you that you're there when we call on to you and what we have need of, you give it to us. Father, minister to hearts tonight. Encourage us, uplift us, give us everything, Father, and we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Serving not only faithfully or serving, continuously serving with zeal also means you're going to do it no matter the cost. Amen. No matter the cost. When we talk about the church, we're, we talk about a mature body, and that's what we should be talking about. People that are mature in, in the Lord. One sign of a person that is not mature is they get offended real quick. As some people might say, they get off-ended. And if you get off-ended real quick, we need to grow up. That's what it's all about, church, is maturing in Christ. Paul even wrote talking about perfection, move on to perfection. He said we are to be made perfect in Christ. You know what that means? That means move on to perfection. That means if somebody says something to you, it doesn't ruffle your feathers. It just hits you and bounces off. It just hits you and bounces off. Yeah, there's certain words that, that can stir you a little bit. You know what you need to do? You just take a breath, smile, and say, Praise the Lord, I am His, and that doesn't bother me. I can praise Him no matter what was done, what was said. 
that's a sign of a mature, cry, uh, mature Christian is when things just bounce off of you and they don't stick. If you got a Velcro all over you and they start sticking, you're going to start getting offended yeah, right. quickly, right. quickly. So we as the body, we as a body, corporate body, cannot be offended quickly. We can't be offended just because what the world is, is trying to push on us or trying to say to us. We have to say, you know what? We serve the king. We don't, we don't serve a president. We don't serve a government. We serve a king. Right. And when we understand we have a king, he has a kingdom, and we are his royal children. Right. He's called us children. Yeah. And if, we are royal, if we're royalty and we're children, we belong to him. We got all the benefits. Everything that belongs to him belongs to us because he's given it into our charge. Practical steps towards spiritual maturity, church. I want you to think about this. We could easily just have called it the marks of spiritual maturity because the absence of these things that what we just read is immaturity. It's difficult to place a greater value on one of these steps than on the other, but one which is perhaps more visible than the rest is our service to God. Our service to God is so important. We don't realize sometimes how we do, what we say, how we act, how we react. Everything we do is so important as a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about Colossians 2 and 3. In whom, all hid, in whom are hid all the treasures, wisdom, and knowledge. It's, it may be and was hid at a certain time when we were in the word ignorance that word ignorance is we were to a point where basically we were in darkness. But when we came out of darkness into the light, you know what we received? We received knowledge. We received wisdom. When we receive wisdom and knowledge, that's power because it backs up what the Word says. Wisdom and knowledge in the Word of God is powerful. It's very powerful. Like the Word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts coming and going because it's, it's two-sided. It's, it cuts this way and it cuts this way. Amen. Both ways. Because it's the Word of God. The church, whereof I am made a minister, according to Paul, minister means servant. That's, and that's what we are. Every one of us. Paul said, I was made a servant of the church. It was God who placed him in the position of, servitu of servitude to the church. And it's God who placed us in our positions. Amen. If you think you've done it, you're badly mistaken. Nobody has, has achieved anything in the body of Christ other than where the Holy Spirit, and we're going to read this in a minute, He puts us and He places us where He wants us. Mark, you was right on this morning when you read Romans 12. 12 and 1, I think you read 1 and 2, verses 1 and 2. I'm going to, I'm going, we're going to read them again, but I want to read right on down just a little further too. It is God who calls us to service. According to Romans 12, 1, 1 through 5, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace God given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one member one of another. All of us are to serve, but our service is not the same. Think about that. All of us are to serve, but our service is is not the same. The prerequisites to service is consecrating ourselves entirely, our whole being, our whole selves, unto Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. This is the meat right here. Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to read right at verse 11 and start reading down. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Very familiar. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what? The perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, and to a perfect man, that perfect meaning mature, 
complete, whole, and to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried away with every wind and doctrine, but by the, by the sly of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Church, when we're, mature, when we're a mature body, when somebody says something that's just plumb off or plumb out there, we know it. When we're mature and we know what the Word says, if, some, if, if and we'll just use the government. If they try to say, this is the way it is now, this is not the way it used to be, but this is the way it is now, and when it becomes contrary to the Word of God, we take a stand and say, no, it's not. No, it's not. That's not what the Word of God says. Word of God. That's what a mature church, an immature church or a church that's not, that hasn't grown spiritually and hasn't grown into maturity, They'll say, well, the path of least resistance is to keep my mouth shut. Let's just step over here with everybody else. So we don't want to cause no waves. We don't cause no problems. That's immature according to the Word of God. If we're going to operate as a mature body, a church that's on fire, we're going to have to operate exactly how the Word says, period. No wavering. No moving. It's what the Word of God says. The purpose in God calling His apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers is to perfect, is to mature the saints, which is us, the Christians. When the believers begin, begin to mature, they will do the work of the ministry, which is our service. Just as we read in Romans 12, it's, that's our reasonable service. When we start to mature and we understand our role as a servant, as somebody that serves, as God being the head, but we serve people, then we understand what our role is as Christians. When the believers begin to mature, they will do the work that we're called to do, which will edify or build up the body of Christ, which is the church. This is a continuing process of maturity. Don't think that you've, because you've been in this walk for a long time that you've got it all and know it all. Because I've not seen anybody that's got it all and knows it all in, in, the, in the, the Word of God. It's a continuing process. We're always learning Always being taught. Every part of the body is necessary to the whole. Every one of us is very important to the body of Christ. As I said this morning, it, when there are members absent, the whole body is incomplete. When you talk about the whole body, if there's something missing or someone missing or person's missing, that means the whole body's not complete. It takes us all. It's going to take us all. Every part of the body is necessary. Our service must continue until the Lord calls us home. Church, there's no stopping place. No place have we ever read in here where it says, okay, it's time for you to stop. Uh, you've done what all you can do. When that happens, you know, he lets us know that, but that's when we take our last breath on this earth. Then our work is done. Then our work has been completed here. And then we've been promoted up to be in the presence of God. Our call to service carries with us a tremendous responsibility. And I know I've talked about this several times, but Paul warns us, don't be ignorant concerning spiritual gifts. We have a great responsibility. Where there's responsibility, what I always say, there's accountability. When we've got a responsibility to serve and we've got a responsibility to minister, then that's what we're going to be held accountable for. It's just like the parable when, when the uh, master brought in and he says, here's the talents, and then there's the, the, the uh, uh, parable of the ten pounds and the five pounds and the one pound. He gave them to people to, to do something with. And when he returned... He, in the parable of the talents, there was the two that did something with their talent, and one did not. Same thing with the pounds, or the ten pound, the five pounds. The parable there, the two that did something with them, but there was the one that had the one pound did not do nothing with it. And he said, because I, you were a hard and a rough person, he said, I just hung on to it. Church, we can't hang on to something we've been blessed with, that we've been given to, and we got responsibility over. Because he said, that one, that, that little one that that person's got, you take it and give the one that's done the most. 
You give to the one that's done most because they're going to go out and do more. They're going to do more and they're going to do more. And that's what's expected of us. Where there's responsibility, there's accountability. And we're going to be held accountable. We can't claim ignorance, just like I mentioned there a minute ago. We can't. Well, I didn't know. God will not hold you responsible for what you don't know. He, that's a true statement, but this, is a, this goes along. There's a, if I was going to make this statement, I'd put a comma. God, according to the Word, will not hold you responsible for what you don't know. Comma. However, He will hold you responsible for what you should know. Amen. And what you should know is His Word. If we got His Word in writing... We do, which is the Word of God, the Bible, and we got His spoken Word. We've got the Holy Spirit that's working within us. We can't claim ignorance when it comes to knowing the Word of God. And when we, every day, well, I say every day, every Sunday, every Wednesday, every t we, we've got our church hours posted. Everybody in this whole community out here has an opportunity to come through our doors. Not just here, but everywhere. There's churches all over, and I know their hours are about like our hours. You come at 10 o'clock in the morning, you can sit in here and be under Sunday school. You come at 11, you'll be under the mid-morning service. You come back Sunday night, you'll be at the 6 o'clock service, the evening service. And you know what you hear? You're going to hear the Word of God. What I'm saying is you, you and everybody else has the opportunity to come in and be a part of the service and hear the Word of God. But now, who is it that chooses to come? That's, that's where it boils down to. Who's going to choose to come and sit and hear the Word of God? There's a lot that, shows, that chooses not to or has chosen not to not come and listen, but there's, there's a group that has, and this is the body of Christ. But you know what? You look around for whatever reason, whatever reason, it's, it's some people have reasons. For whatever reason, not everybody's here. Not everybody's here working and listening and Receiving what God has got for us tonight. Our call to service carries a tremendous, a tremendous responsibility, church. And I don't know if I can say it any plainer than that. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, I would have you not be ignorant. For we have received at least, we have seen, not just one, but we've seen a bunch of gifts operating in the church. Amen. We've seen the Holy Spirit sees, and, and you know what? It's open to everybody. The gifts are open to each and every one of us. But he says he puts them in to the body according to how he sees fit. Not how we see fit, but how he sees fit. If there's a gift of faith or gift of healing or gift, gift of, of tongues or as this morning, interpretation of tongues, if it is given, and if, if, it's, if the Holy Spirit sees that, that we have need of it, he gives it to us and we operate in it. That's a sign of a mature church. That's a sign of a church that's on fire, that's listening to God and speaking what? When He speaks it, we just speak it back out. When He gives it to us, we just bring it right back out. And that is a sign of a mature church. That's a sign of a church that's on fire for God. As we've said, said before, it may not be the same. One person may have one gift, one person may have another gift. I don't believe everybody's going to have the same gift because our God likes, he says, just because this person's not feeling well tonight and there's a, there's a person in here that needs a gift of faith, this person may have been operating in that, but you know what the Holy Spirit says? This person needs his faith lifted up a little bit. He said, I'm going to give that extra gift of faith right here. He said, I'm going to give it to this person. And they're going to walk over and they're going to lay hands on this person. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to pray that prayer of faith. And there's a gift, the, the, the gift of faith that, that's above what just believing. Not only is it believing, it's knowing. You can believe it, but you, you can know it. And when you say it, when you speak it, when you pray it, you know it's going to happen. That's, that, that's another level of faith. Abraham had that faith. Abraham just said, God said it. It's going to be done. There's no doubt. No, there was no question. He said, God said it, therefore it's done. And you know what? Uh, the scripture tells us that it was counted unto Abraham righteousness because what? He believed God. Amen. He had the faith. He believed what the Lord said. Everyone cannot teach or preach, but we can all be made servants of Christ. Peter tells us to serve as good stewards. As 1 Peter 4 and 10, a steward is one who has been entrusted with the possessions of another. Ooh. 
He said, we've all been made stewards, so therefore we are entrusted with possessions of the other. You know what we're entrusted with? This precious Word of God. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news to be spread to others. God has given us a, a given us spiritual gifts in which He expects us to use for His glory. It's not about us. It's not for us. It's to be used for the body of Christ. Remember what I and I used the uh, parable of the, of the uh, ten servants and delivered them ten pounds. And He said, "Occupy." He told them. He said, when he gave them the the ten pounds, he gave the three, the one ten, one five, and one one. He said, now occupy till I come. You know what he said? He said, you stay busy till I return. And that's what he expects us to do. He expects his church, his body to stay busy, operating in the spiritual gifts, operating in what he's given us, the gospel, as stewards, as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He expects us to take what he's given us, entrusted in us, entrusted in our possession, and like I said, that's a responsibility. And I know I said, like I said, it's tremendous responsibility to hold so dear the precious things. That's why we can't be baited into an argument over the Word. That's why we can't be baited into somebody trying to, trying to trip us up because that's when you get in something you hold so dear to you, the gospel. That's when they, they try to get, it, get you into and twist you up. That's throwing your pearls before the swine. Don't cast your pearls before the swine. Your pearls is what you hold precious to you, and that's the Word of God. And don't let somebody trick you into that. When you see somebody's leading you down that path, you say, well, let's, let's, let's mean you pray about it. Let's just pray. And you, you just try to get them to pray right then and right there, see what happens. If they pray with you and they want to hear more, then you tell them more. If you can tell that, the, that they are, they're just doing it to, to get under your skin or just to, to try you, then you pray with them and say, Lord, you help them. You, you, you just open their eyes that uh, if I can't get uh, the word to them, you let, Lord, let somebody else get to them. The key to being a good, stir, a good steward and a good servant is faithfulness to God. He said, who will I find faithful? Who will the Son of Man find faithful when he returns? It's the ones that's got the possessions he's been entrusted with that's out doing the work that he's been given or she's been given. That's who's going to be the faithful servant. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Along with the responsibility of stewardship comes the accountability. I've said that. In Luke 12, 48 says, But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. But unto whomsoever much is given, of him much shall be required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. You know, if I've... I've, I've not heard it directly, but I've heard it in so many words. Well, if I don't know a whole lot, I won't be responsible for a whole lot. Or if I don't go too deep or too far in this, I won't have to give an account maybe for what the Word says. Man, if you're thinking like that, you're thinking totally backwards. That's not what it's all about. It's not what it's all about. What it's all about is what you do for the Lord and He's given to you and puts in your hand. That's what you're accountable for. That's right. Amen. That's exactly right. Our goal, church, is service. Our goal is... Is service to honor the Lord Jesus Christ. You know how we honor Him is we serve Him, but more importantly, we, we serve Him. We serve others because He's handed it to us. He said, "Now, He said, you have got what you need. You've been equipped. Now go out and do the work." As Christians, everything we do, or in some cases, everything we don't do, reflects upon the Lord Jesus Christ because of who we say we are. The goal of our service ought to be to honor and glorify Him rather than ourselves. If we get self out of the way, that, you know that was, the most, that was the most difficult thing for me was getting me out of the way. But you know what I was trying to do? I was trying to figure Him out. And I, and I realized after a period of time that I struggled, that I uh, just was in, in, in distress and turmoil, that I couldn't figure him out. And that's, he, he pretty well, pretty quickly let me know that. And he said, you don't try to figure me out. He said, you just watch. You, you get out of the way. And that's what I heard. 
You get out of the way. I can't, can't say it's his audible voice, but I knew in my spirit. He said, you get out of the way. You know it's me working. Watch me work. And, and when I got out of the way, it just opened up. Can I explain everything to you? Nope. I can't, but I know it's him working. I know it's him working through me and in me. I know it's him working in this body because you can see him. He's very evident, and he's, and he's present in our services. And if we get us out of the way, remember we, we talked about this before, when the Holy Spirit, when he comes in, he flows in here. He flows. We might be in song. We might be in prayer. We might be right in the middle of, of a message. And when he starts to flow in, you know what? That's time for us to get out of the way, and it's time for us to say, okay, let's flow with the Spirit of God. And when he starts flowing, we get in that Spirit, things start happening. Because he's in charge. Now, if we're not careful, we'll override that. We'll, we'll, we'll put our agenda in here. And I, that's what I try to be very careful about. It's not about me. It's not about my agenda. It's not about, my, about, it's about what I've prepared based on what the Lord's given me. And if he's given it to me and he says, give it, I give it. And he says, get out of the way, I get out of the way. Christ is honored through the work of the Spirit. Christ is honored through the fulfilling of the Word of God. All spiritual gifts are ministries of the Word, not just preaching, and Christ is exalted through the proper exercise of our gifts. When we're operating in the gifts when we're, when we're out in, the, in, in our, whether it be on our job or we're out in stores or we're out in post office, and I use stores and post office because that's where you see a lot of people. When you're out about and amongst the, uh, of a lot of people and, and it, somebody comes up to you and says, I need prayer. I'm, I've been hurting for a long time. Well, let's just pray right now. Or somebody come up to you and says, my family member or my friend, they remember them in prayer. I'll tell you what, let's just mean you go to prayer with them right now. A lot of times when people call me on the phone, that's what I feel led to do. I don't know why. I just say, they'll say, I need for you. They'll call the house or they'll call my cell phone. They'll say, we need, need to remember so-and-so. I said, I tell you what, let's just mean you and agree right now in prayer that that need would be taken care of or that situation be taken care of. So you can do things just like that, that quick. You can, you can enter into prayer. You can, you can intercede for somebody. And I know you're all just like me at times. You've been woken up at night and somebody's, you'd be thinking about somebody or somebody's face just appear before you. You know, go right into prayer. Start interceding in prayer for them because you don't know what they might be going through or what, what situation they're in. In church, the ultimate goal of mature Christian is to bring others to the knowledge and the saving grace of Jesus Christ, to make, that, make it known. We preach that we may present Christ to the world, to our little part of the world. We may not be missions, missionaries. We may not go out on missions. We may not travel to other countries. But if, if you'll just travel down the street, if you'll just travel just a few miles here and there, I guarantee you, if you, you, you wouldn't even have to get in your car. You could probably walk. I, I guarantee you'll find somebody to minister to. Guarantee it. Whether it's a neighbor, whether it's a friend, a co-worker, somebody you know, there's somebody that you can minister to because we are ministers of the Lord. Paul speaks about a corporate growth of believers through the mature ministry of love. Everything we do, church, has to be out of love. We have to do it in love. It, because if, if you're not doing it in love, and Paul even writes it in Corinthians, he says, all, all you, if you have not love, you, you, you can have uh, certain gifts. You know, he said, I can have all the faith. I can have all the, the power of, of healing. I can have everything. But if I do it in love, all the thing I'm doing is just making noise. His words in the King James was, he said, I'm just making, he said, I'm a tinkling cymbal. He said, I'm just doing something like that. I'm just making some noise if I'm not, if my motives are not love. And see, the word of God, when you get it inside of you, the word, it searches deep. It searches motives. It searches the intent of the heart. So you might be saying one thing, but what's really your intent? What's really going on down here in your innermost being, down here where the soul, your intellect is, where your decision-making is? Good question, isn't it? Make you think. Sure, make me do a lot of thinking and meditating, making sure my motives are right and my motives are pure. Why am I doing this? Am I doing it because I love? 
because I love. And that's what we have to do, because we love. Ephesians 4.16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body and to the edifying of itself in love. Love. If there's anything that this church is known for, it's love. It's love. You know what else? We're, We're known as a church on fire in town. You remember when we all went over to uh, Clearfield Tabernacle uh, not too long ago? It was the Ascension service. And, uh, of course, I uh, walked in and talked with a brother. And we got, had just one of the, uh, the schedules or the order of service. And he said, look down there. He said, we got you all down there last. He said, you know what? We didn't do that just by, by chance. He said, we put you all down there last so you could get everybody fired up. That's what they said. They said, we know when you, all go, when you all start singing, everybody gets fired up. That's how we're known among the community. What a responsibility. What a tremendous honor that people look at us, this body, as being a, being a group that can get people fired up for the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't think about what we do as mature Christians as a mature body, as a growing body, that there's not going to be bumps. There's not going to be ups and downs. There's, there's going to be definitely bumps in the road. There's a cost. There's a, there's, a, there's a cost of service. Listen, if it costs Jesus Christ his life, don't think that we're going to get by unscathed or without a few bumps, without a few bruises, without a few hurt feelings, without a few getting knocked down. We're going to get knocked down a time or two. But you know what? It doesn't, it doesn't matter that we get knocked down. It's that we get back up. Just like a boxer. They asked a boxer one time. He said, how many times have you been on the ground? He said, he said a lot. He said, I wasn't too worried about hitting going to the ground. Is how many times I got back up. And that's what we got to be concerned about, how many times we get back up. Every time we, we might go down, we might stumble, we might trip, or we might go down. But let me tell you something. We're coming right back up. It just be, we'll just be like a rubber ball. As soon as we hit, we'll bounce right back. Yeah, there's a cost to service. There's a cost to, to uh, walking in this walk. It's, there's a cost to being a mature Christian. It's going to cost you time. It's going to cost you effort. It's going to cost you praying. It's going to cost you pushing back your plate. Oh, I said it again. Nah, I didn't say fast. Oh, it did. I said fast. It's going to cost us to do that. It might cost us a meal or two. But church, it's worth it. It's worth it. It involves suffering. We've already dealt extensively with, with the relationship of suffering and maturity in, in several messages. You know, I've talked about it, and, and, and it's, it seems like it's been incorporated in, in several of the messages about how we have to understand that who we serve and that Jesus Christ died for not just us, He died for everybody. He, it's hard to say this because of what they're doing. But that group called ISIS over there, he died for them too. He died for them. Even though they're killing, they're beheading people, they're burning them alive, they're drowning them. They're so brutal. But he still died for them too. He still died for them. I'm going to be like, uh, what's the Duck Dynasty, Phil, what's his name? Robinson. Robinson. I'll be like Phil Robinson. He had him on Hannity. I don't know if y'all saw that or not. Had him sitting there, and of course he's got his camo on, he's got his headband on, and he's got his beard. But you know when he's sit, when he's when he's there, he's got laying right in front of him his Bible, and he picks it up a few times and he refers to it. And he he actually opens it up and he reads out of Ephesians. And then Hannity asked him this question. He said, "Phil," he said, "You're a devout Christian, a man of faith." He said, "He said, you know, you you make that known. You you don't hide that." He said. What about this group called ISIS that's so brutal, that so, that have, have no conscience towards other human beings? He said, well, Sean, it's like this. He said, We'd, we, we would love to be able to convert them. We would love to, to be able to say, speak to them. And he said, love the opportunity to sit down with them just like you and I are here with the Word of God and open it up and read to them. And hopefully would get to them, would, would soften their hearts but he said, Sean, he said, if we don't or we're not able to win them over, he said, we got to kill them. 
course, he took a he took a hard beating for that. I mean, people, you know, the the liberals just ju jumped all over him for that. But he said that's he said they're to the point where if something's not done with them, all they're going to do is cause more death. They're going to cause more suffering. And he said, you know, he said I pray for him. He said I do. He said, I'd love to convert them. If we could convert them, we'd convert them. But he said, if we can't convert them, we've got to kill them. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. And what, but what I'm saying is Jesus died for them. He died for everybody. He didn't, he didn't just die for a certain group. See, the early, the, the early apostles, Peter mainly, see, he thought the gospel just was for the Jews. He started out, he said... He said, we, we're not even supposed to go around, the, definitely the Samaritans, but we're not even supposed to go to the Gentiles. We're, this, is, this is the house of Israel. This is who we're supposed to be preaching to. And that's why when Paul came along, him and, him and Peter had a little bit of contention going on. Because Paul knew he was chosen to preach to the Gentiles. He knew that. And when he started preaching and taking the gospel to the Gentiles, all oh, it ruffled Peter's feathers. He said, "All he said, the, the, he said, the, the, what Paul preaches is, is difficult to understand. Got to get a little shot to Paul over there on the side. So you know, it, not not everything was rosy. There was a cost to it. And one of the one of the people that uh, uh, Paul was with John Mark to start with, and he left. He had to leave John. John, I believe it was was it John Mark. He had to leave with. He had to leave, and then he picked up Barnabas." And took him with him. But he, he did say John Mark was profitable to the gospel. He was still profitable. You know, we can have a little bit of contention. We can have a little bit of disagreement, just like some of the, the denominations have, even through this community and throughout the world. But you know what? We can still have the same baseline, and that base is Jesus Christ, crucified, resurrected, and at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. We can have little differences here and there, but as long as we've got that baseline down, there's all church. There's always have and always will be a cost for who we represent. It costs Jesus, and it'll definitely going to cost us. We've all and Paul simply reminds us that often our sufferings serve a divine purpose. If you remember the disciples when they were persecuted for preaching the gospel. And when they were let go, they said they were they were they were joyful. They they were glad that they were per, that they could be accounted worthy just to be persecuted for the gospel. That's 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 tough. That's that's being sold out, mature Christians right there. It's when we get persecuted, whether it's through our government, and that's how we're we're getting it right now through the media, through people that that just. Uh, don't want anything, the atheists, the agnostics don't want anything to do with, with us, me or you, with the church. And they start uh, pushing, and they're going to keep pushing, they're going to keep pushing and try to do everything they can to either shove us back inside these walls and not, not let us out, or they're going to try to shut us down one way or the other. That's, that's some of the persecution that we're going to experience. We're already, it's already started. It's already started. But that's, that's what they want for us to do is just stay inside and be quiet. And just, we got to remember too, while Paul was writing uh, the, uh, the uh, epistles in Rome, the epistle of Rome, the letter in Rome, he was in prison. He wrote, he wrote Romans in prison. So you got to think, we got to think about persecution. Persecution is going to come. He could rejoice in his sufferings for the church, even though he... And you know, <laughs> I've said it, I think, here before, but prison in that particular time sure wasn't a prison like it is today. Dominoes didn't deliver in, in a uh, Roman prison. There wasn't no color television. There wasn't even a, a little mat with a sheet on it. No gems. A Roman prison, you were at least knee-deep, if not waist deep in water, chained to about 10 or 15 other people. And the guards didn't stay outside the cell. The guards stayed in the cell right there with you. So it wasn't, wasn't like what you think. Still, Paul thought it was an honor to be persecuted, and he was able to write the epistle and epistles. 
Someone once said, of course, there, there are no gains without any pains. I'll close with this. Church, we must work to serve God. It's not going to be easy. Paul speaks of laboring and striving in service because we're blood bought. It cost Jesus. Christ never said it would, would be anything but hard. He never said it's going to be an easy road for you. If you come and serve me, serve me it's going to be the best. It is the best thing, but he, he didn't say it was going to be the easiest thing, did he? He didn't say it was going to be easy. In Matthew 9, 37, it says, And then saith he to his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. We need to work together for the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 27, Only let our conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ that whether I come and I see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand, stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. That's what it's all about, church, preaching the gospel, getting it out there, letting other people hear. How, how selfish would that be of us, just to hoard this up for us? I'm not going to tell so-and-so they might get blessed. Mm -mm. They may get what I'm getting. No, I'm not going to do that. No, our attitude should be, I want everybody to have everything I have. Everything that I'm experiencing, I want everybody to experience. The kingdom offers great rewards. Nothing gives us rewards and blessings as to our exercising the gifts of the ministry. If we exercise our gifts, it brings, rewards and it brings rewards and blessings to us. And it brings it to the body. Not just as individuals, it brings it to the body. The body of Christ. All of our rewards may not be realized in this life, but the life that is to come, and that they will be. We will know. You know, it says it's better for us to where we're to store up our treasures in heaven rather than on this earth, because things of this earth will corrupt it. We don't want to take anything we've got from this earth into a place called heaven, into a place called paradise. There's nothing. Only thing we want to. Only thing we really want to take with us is somebody else, other people. Because it, things don't matter. I think we're going to have things because we've laid the treasures up in heaven. Rewards are going to be great. Rewards are going to be wonderful. And there'll be a rewards day in heaven. And that's called the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ. When we all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, it says we'll give an account for the deeds done in our body, good or bad. It said we will be given. That, that's, that's what we're working towards is the rewards. See, it's so good that we don't have to work for salvation. Salvation is a free gift. But you know what we do? We work for rewards. We're, we're, we're saved not by our works, but we're saved to do works, to do our good works before men, before others, so other we can bring them all into the kingdom. It's like in the, when Jesus told him, he said, cast out that net. He said, well, we've cast it out and we brought in nothing. He said, go out just a little bit further on the other side. He said, cast that net out. Sometimes... To reach people, church, we've got to go out just a little bit farther and we've got to go to the other side. And when we go to the other side, that's where, that's where the big uh, catch is. That's where the big net is that you can drop over and you can bring others in. And what, basically what that means is we've got to get out of our comfort zone. We've got to go out just a little bit further. We've got to stay a little bit longer. We've got to do just a little bit more. And it'll take us out of our comfort zones. Rewards will be great. Nothing gives such rewards and blessings as exercising the gifts of the ministry, going out and preaching and teaching the Word of God, seeing somebody saved, seeing somebody touched, seeing somebody rededicated, seeing somebody that's, that's restored back into the kingdom. Matthew 5, 12, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. And... Colossians 3, 23, 24, it says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that the Lord that ye shall knowing that of that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Whatsoever you do, church, whatever soever we do, we do it heartily and we do it as we're doing it unto the Lord. You know, that goes in our everyday life, everyday walk. 
Everything we do, we should do it as we're doing it unto the Lord. When you show up for work, you do it you, you, just like you're working for the Lord. We may have a job to do on this earth that's in the natural, but you know what? There's a spiritual job there. And if you're a Christian, your coworkers will know it. The people you're around, the people you have influence over, and the people that have influence over you, the people that you talk to every single day, they'll know that you represent Jesus Christ. That's going to be so important. So important now. This going forward, this is a new time and, and, and new chapter in, in the new step. And I, it's further along down the line. You know, the last days and the last of the last days and the last of the last of the last days. You know, you can just keep right on going, but we're down. We're getting down to where everything is going to be so important <coughs> in our lives, how we do and what we do for the kingdom of God. It's going to be so important, church. As to sum it all up, what, what, what I said tonight is basically this, is we got a work to do. we got a, we got a, we got a mission field. We've got a harvest out there. There's people out there that need to hear the gospel. There's people need to hear you and me taking it to them, taking it out. Jesus didn't tell his disciples, well, you go into the synagogue and you sit down and you just wait for them to show up and when they show up, you preach to them. Now, we come and gather together and people come in. That, that does happen. But when we go out, they would, more than likely, they're not going not to know to come in unless we're out there telling them to come and visit us, come and be with us, inviting them in, telling them what the Lord has done for you, what the Lord's done. I tell them what the Lord's done for me. That's how we get them in. We go out and we, we work for the kingdom and bring them in. Amen? Let's everybody stand.